Security levels is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, you know, you mentioned it already in other videos, uh, especially with creating resources that uh, you have to have security levels in place. Security levels is kind of a way to structure the, the security for different kind of resources in the same kind of level. In this case, you don't have to set up per resource all the, all the securities. You basically define them per group. How can you find it? You go to admin and from admin, you go to the section that says resources. And under the security header, that's where you find the security levels. The good thing is that by default, uh, Autodesk gives you already a whole bunch of uh, security levels in the system. Uh, they're all here listed as system. They're all already active. And what we uh, advise you is to create a copy. I'm going to start with a service desk user, but I quickly want to mention two other settings that you uh, can be very helpful. There's an API user. It uh, doesn't cost you a, a license for using a resource that's only an API user. And that's for all your integrations. We'll cover that in a separate video. There's also one that is called a dashboard user. For, and you can use that one as a user. Again, there's no uh, expense to it. You can have that user in the system as only access to the dashboards. And that's very handy when you have a couple of TVs in your office or several TVs, you log in with that resource and then you can show those dashboards in a rotating scale on there. Today, what we're going to do is that we're going to use a, a service desk user. I'm going to show you how to do it. And you're going to right click on the little pencil and then we're going to say copy security level. Like I said, these ones are by default by uh, the system. And in any case, we would never recommend to edit the default settings. So basically always, whenever you change something, make a copy and make it your own. And in this case, what we would recommend is that you say, let's make it an underscore. And then we say the company name and space, there's space and service desk user. And then in this case, you can remove the words system because this is not a system anymore. This is one that is for us. Make it a full screen so we can see it a little bit better. Here you can see that there is all the modules that you can open up and you have a quick button of saying full permission or no permission. Once you open it up, you expand this section and you will see that in this case, it's all nothing, which is good for a service desk user. I would recommend to leave this one as is. Like I said, this one is a system setting uh, from Autodesk. They are in default already a good system. So you probably can get away with it right away from here. Uh, but let's go through all the sections and make sure that we have everything set up. Because if you have a service desk user that needs to be adding contracts, then you might need to give a little bit more permissions or create a separate security level that has those access to those contracts. You probably don't want to have all your resources also being able to edit the, the contracts. CRM, indeed, you have to have almost full permission on this one. This means that they can uh, create and, and, and cancel uh, clients or customers, however you have it labeled, vendors and leads. And it's basically everything that's over here is, is on a set yes. If you run into full permission, you will see that everything toggles back to, uh, to a yes. And you can also say to a no permission and, and guide it from there. There's a couple of extra settings over here. Uh, contact group manager, for sure you don't want to have that turn on because that means that somebody can send out mass mails. You need to limit it as much as possible. You can ex export features in CRM section. I would say turn the one on because it's very handy when you need to export a list of, of users. Uh, a lot of times people ask me, hey, how many contacts do I have in a system to give a quick match? So usually I put that one on. Device discovery wizard, that's also a nice one to have on. Can manage code templates. Uh, that would be something more for sales. I'm not sure that's exactly why it is in this section, but no there. Can request RMA. Again, if you use the RMA function of Autodesk, you can, you can turn it on. If you don't use it, you can just easily turn it off. Opportunity checklist permissions. So as you can see, this is more for the sales section. Uh, in this case, uh, if the person doesn't do any sales, then I would say turn the one off because we are in a service desk user. And other permissions, uh, re-signing companies, no, because this is for something that's only doing the tickets. Owners, display all companies. Yes, you want to have that one. And can erase redact contacts. Sometimes we say for the service desk user to not enable that. It's usually your dispatcher or another person that maybe adds those contacts. So that's a good one to leave in place. So you're done with that setting. It's good to click the one again to close it. And we can go to the next one. Inventory is again a whole module that is there as well. Um, if you don't use it, then let's put it to no permission. In this case, I'm going to show you how to go to no permission. 
And that's where you saw the things were changed. It's all went to none. Um, if you have a person that does do some inventory work, uh, you can make them a separate security level and give that person those additional features to make sure that they can edit the, the inventory. Projects, it again depends if this particular service desk user is working in projects. Uh, you might have a separate service desk user that does only the tickets. You might have a service desk user that does only projects. But I can completely understand that you also have a lot of guys that are hybrid that are working on tickets and projects both at the same time. So I would for sure leave this one also uh, on. Uh, so you have the flexibility for a person to work both tickets and projects. Again, uh, you can choose between client and internal if they only can see all or mine or none. Uh, in this case, I would say they can see uh, all ones. Proposals, that again depends if you want to have those uh, users access to, to proposals that are being generated. Uh, in this case, I would say all so they have access to all, all of them one. And the same thing too with the, the project templates. And adding, it's again that they have the right. Now again, your company might be different. You might say, okay, I'm going to have a project coordinator. Uh, then you can split those resources that you say uh, they can only view, but you're going to have your project coordinator and he will be the one that that's basically has the permission to add. So you can see there's a lot of detailed features and, and everything is kind of uh, set with how your company, uh, the size of your company, what kind of positions you have in there and how you control it. But there's a lots of possibilities. Time entry permissions, you can also regulate it over here can modify contract on task and, and, and issue time entries. So if you want to leave those guys to be able to modify the contract, you leave it on. Usually you can leave it off and you control it on the back end with the, with the contracts and, and uh, only a super user can have those entries. Uh, Non-billable setting, you technically don't want to give them that setting. That's something that you should be uh, controlling and, and being override by an admin. Uh, show an invoice, the same thing too. You don't want to have them that enabled. Can modify work for a type on task and time image that's for sure that they need to have enabled because that's an important thing if they uh, they have to choose the right work type and the right work type also has again to do with the billing so that's an important thing that they are able to select that one uh, the other one uh, modify service bundle don't check that one either the checklist permissions uh, yes for sure they can have uh, add and edit items uh, but don't have them allowance to to change the the library that's again something for a more the project coordinator in this case or, or an admin person. And in this case, can view time entry notes for sure that one too. And can view legacy project dashboard. If you just start with this, then, then you don't have to turn that one on. So this one setting is fine too. Now, the biggest kicker for this user, of course, is to be found under the service desk section. And as you can see, it looks a little bit similar to what we saw in the project. So in this case, yeah, you for sure you want to have him view all the tickets, being able to add and edit and everything. Ticket notes, indeed, only to mine. And you want to have a regular user not being able to edit any other tickets. Same thing too with delete, uh, uh, only your own. Same thing with deletion of the tickets. You can only, when you create a ticket, you can delete them. But you can't create anybody else's. And you're like, if hey, somebody needs to create a ticket uh, or a delete ticket from somebody else, that should have been done by an admin person or you have maybe a service coordinator or a dispatcher person or a project coordinator that has those features. So you have to make sure that don't give a service desk user all the access for those kind of things. They need to have the ability to, uh, to go to a high level. But for sure, if they created the ticket wrongly, their own tickets that they created, for sure, they should be able to delete them. So this is how you can set it up. And a service call, the same thing too, all and yes and yes. And a service calls again, uh, they can do their own ones also. They should be able to delete them. And they have the ability to create one. They should also have the ability to delete just their own ones, but not of something else. Going a little bit down, um, as we have render all tickets as a ticket category, we'll leave the one on the, on the default. Time entry permissions, for sure. Uh, again, it's the same what we happened with the, with the projects. So we turn off this first section to not change the contract, to not be able to change non-billable, to not show an invoice but can modify work type on ticket time entries. That's something that we explained a little bit earlier, that that's an important one. And the rest can be turned off again. Ticket checklist, the same as what happened with the projects. So these are the settings that are, are, are the best. And I would, in this case, also say can delete uncomplete items. Uh, sometimes, indeed, you have to uh, modify some items. Other permissions uh, can edit status of complete tickets. In this case, I would kind of turn that one off. It might limit yourself a little bit. 
but this case, uh, these regular service desk users cannot uh, uncomplete the ticket and put it back in a different status. So a completed ticket stays there. If it needs to be reopened, then it needs to be by a, an admin or a person with, with more resources. Of course, you can view ticket search, can view the recurring master ticket and service call searches. Again, you might be able to say the recurring master ticket, and that's something in another video will explain what that is, uh, to leave that one up to a, a more dedicated admin resource. Can view the user-defined grids, that's good. Can access the dispatch calendar, yes, for sure. Legacy service desk dashboard. Again, if you are just starting with this one, uh, then there's no way to, or no need to go back to the legacy one. Can view time entry internal notes, that's a good one. Can view add, manage recurrent master tickets. That has to do with the same option here too. Uh, in this case, I will leave it on so that you have the ability, but later on you might say that's going to be to a more admin person who's going to manage those recurrent master. Administer ticket tags and tag groups, that's something for your administrator. And can remove ticket tags, it's the same thing too. That would be for a person that has a little bit more uh, higher admin knowledge and higher rights. Well, that's for the service desk user. Then we go to a little bit to a couple of other sections, documents and knowledge space. Of course, the user needs to have access. Uh, I think in this case, the default settings are perfectly fine. So this user can exit the knowledge base, can exit the documentation. They can add all the uh, articles. Uh, they can only edit all, but that would maybe be only mine. Uh, leave everything to mine in sealing documents. Only they can edit mine. Delete, they can also only their own ones. Again, a higher level user, like an admin, that one you would say, okay, let's give them a little bit more rights. And that's where you can also say, can manage the knowledge base and can manage documentation. In this case, for a service user, this is fine that they can at least do their own uh, section what they did. Timesheets, uh, of course, they have the, the, the timesheets. Uh, they do not need the time of a payroll reports. Uh, they don't need to go to pay and export the timesheets. They do uh, should be able to create new project time entries from the timesheet and also time off permissions. And here you have the not required to enter start and end time. Um, I would say leave the one off. So at least you have a good start and end time. Sometimes for the smaller one time off requests, uh, then you can also know like, okay, is it like, for example, in the morning or is it in the afternoon? So I would turn that one off. Then we go to reports. Again, depends a whole bunch of uh, stuff if this user is going to run reports, yes or no. Sometimes the regular uh, exports is fine. They don't need to run extra reports. Uh, by default, I think this is this is the good one. The CRM module, the project and service desk, what they need. And uh, other, because there's a couple of other items in there. But you might be able to say, you know what, I'm going to just start with this user just for project and service desk. That's where they can run reports. And for the rest, uh, they need to have extensive reports they need to go to a supervisor or the admin. Then we go to a section about admin section. Well, in this case, since it's a regular user, this controls if they have access to any of the admin features. Like I said, it's a regular user, should not have any access to any of the admin features. It's already all turned off. If some would be applied, you would have been pressing on the no permission and it would unapply it all. Um, in a later video, maybe we can come with a more uh, detailed setting on a different one, uh, but you will see that the admin user, the security level admin, has everything enabled. On the other, there's a little bit, a couple of items that, that you can uh, enable or, or disable, however uh, is your, your work settings. So resources, uh, internal cost, for sure you don't want to have your regular service desk user uh, view this one. Surveys, again, uh, depends if you're working on, on the servers, if you're using this system or an outside system. Uh, but yeah, at least you can view the company survey ratings. That's a good one. The rest is more into detail. I would not uh, do that. Client portal, not for a service user. That would also be for the admin user. Resource visibility, uh, that's also, again, also turned off. You don't need to have that one. Form templates, of course, you can always create and manage your own form templates. So that's a good setting. QuickBooks new, uh, if you use it QuickBooks, then it's great. Uh, I would just indeed uh, enable those ones. Uh, a lot of people maybe don't even use QuickBooks, so you can leave it off. Miscellaneous, connects news feeds. If you use it, uh, turn it on. If you don't use the news feeds, you can just turn it off. The same thing too for the public team walls. If you're not using it and you're not presenting anything on there, you can also turn the one off. Uh, all private team walls, you don't want to have that one there because it's again would be for an admin. Can access coworker profile information. That would be fine. Just the profile information is fine. 
can access global node search. I would have this one on for every security level. Uh, global node search is a very powerful feature within Autodesk. You just type what you're looking for and it can search through all the, the entire database. Can export grid data. Uh, I would say uh, turn it on because it's a powerful feature where a service desk user for whatever search he does is able to export it. Now again, keep a little bit in mind is that sometimes uh, this can be tricked as uh, for example, running an entire client list and be able to export it. So keep it with a grain of salt, maybe not exporting at all, but I think it's a handy feature to be able to have that, uh, that, uh, that feature. Can add and add a dashboard widget tabs. Yes, for sure, leave the one on. Can manage shared dashboard tabs. That would be then for a uh, more admin user. Uh, the dashboards, we will cover that in a separate module. Can offer dashboard widgets to other resources. Yes, for sure, you want to have that one on. If somebody creates a nice one, then you want to share that. But uh, accessing the executive dashboard and the billing portal, that's for a service desk user, not an option. So we leave that one off. And can view internal cost data. I would uncheck the one because they don't have nothing to do with that one. It would be again for a high level person. And then we have the web service API. Since this is not an API user, we don't need nothing there. In this case, we could press already no permission, but everything is already turned off. So we're good to go there too. And that basically should conclude all the settings that are in here. There's also a tab for the live reports folder. And under the right fields folder, that's where we have a section on the uh, which folders are able to access and which ones are not. And also on resources, we can say which resources are here. Right now, there's only for live reports folders, only a couple of reports. Again, if you uh, have set up live reports, then you can later on add it. If you don't have any live reports, don't turn it on because if there's nothing there, a user will just get stuck. Uh, once you start working on the live reports, again, it's a different module where we explain how that all works. Once you have a couple of good reports and you think it's for a service that user needed, then you have to go back to the security level and provide them access. Resources that would give you a list of the users that are uh, added to this one. In this case, it's a, it's a new uh, security level, so there's no resources yet. Once you create a new user, you can assign this security level and then from there you can go. So we're done. That means don't forget it to press save and close. And once this window closed, then we know for sure that this security setting has been set. Now you can create your new user uh, and then you can add the security level. Creating this new user will be done in a separate video. Uh, that should be all. Thank you. And if you have any questions, just let us know.